Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We are going to start a new theme this week since it's Monday and this one is critical acclaim. Albums that are just widely received as positive throughout the critical realm as well as the uh, the listener realm, the casual listener's realm. Just great albums regardless of who you talk to. We're going to be kicking it off this week with Pink Floyd's The Dark Side of the Moon. The track specifically that was selected to represent this album is Time. So let's dive into this and see what Pink Floyd is bringing to the table today. Yeah, so the ringing clocks are a bit on the nose for the concept of time, but I do like the presence of the click track, whether that is a metronome or not. I wonder. Let me check the BPM on this real quick. Really nice atmosphere in all of this. Yeah, that's exactly 120 beats per second. It's a beat every half of a second uh, perfectly. So the concept of time and clocks, we have a perfect representation of the passage of time in our tempo. Um, so for every four of those, those are your seconds. That is a perfect second. Actually, that last section, even this one, that might as I'm pretty sure that's 60 BPM. That is exactly one beat per second. Very smart. Really nice harmonizations right there. I like the way that our guitar and organ kind of vamping off each other rhythmically.
yeah. A really interesting bite to the guitar, like a warble. I think it's a slight delay, actually. Really prominent display of the rhythmic bouncing back. It sounds great uh, with the headphones. Probably sounds a lot better with speakers too. Really interesting soulful vocal work. It's had a small tempo shift. Oh, we're still at 60, so we sped up a little bit. I missed that. Nice little bass lick right there. You got a retardando happening. Uh, slowing down of the tempo, gradual. Yeah, that's another Pink Floyd track that I've enjoyed. I probably should end up checking out this album. I think I have one of their other albums on my list already, but I don't think Dark Side is. Um, it's just a really solid uh, down-tempo rock track with some phenomenal vocal work on top of it. And probably for, at the time of release, some really interesting sonic qualities going on with uh, the guitar tone and some of the additional sounds that they're getting out of. Uh, honestly, I don't know. Every time I hear about these earlier bands and how they created stuff that we would just take for granted. We use a, you know, a, a digital synth or something to create this. They didn't have that um, back then. And... I always hear about these wild and genius ways of how they created different sound effects for uh, for this. Like the clocks, they're just recorded clocks, I think. But um, the click track at the beginning, you know, I, I said that I don't know if they used a metronome for it or what, but it doesn't sound like a metronome that I know. And that's not to say that I've heard every metronome in the world, but it was very woody and hollow and thin. And I'm used to a more metallic clack for metronomes and again that's not to say that there aren't wooden sounded metronomes but it just isn't what I would typically associate with that it sounds to me more like a the dull muffledness of like a grandfather clock um, which is probably what they were going for given that we just had a bunch of alarms going off the concept of time and clocks is already present there so I don't know what it is or how they made it um, I mean for all I know <laughs> there was literally somebody there with a wood block just gunk 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 just hitting the wood block that's a terrible wood block sounds too chunky <laughs> uh but yeah like the entire process of how this music is created is something that's a bit foreign to me as i'm pretty much only used to acoustic 
creation. Uh, you know, a lot of my background is in classical music. I write the sheet music and I find people with traditional instruments to play it. Um, and recently I've gotten into using DAWs and learning digitization of music with synthesizers and virtual instruments and stuff. Pretty much everything in between, uh, most of the early days of recording and stuff like that is information I don't have that I probably should get into because I continue to find it fascinating when people in the comments explain to me this band had to do this and run it through this and then double record it on tape and then fast forward it to get this out. Like, well, how would somebody come up with this? Um, it's just a completely different style of music creation. Um, so about the song itself, though, it's, like I said, it's kind of a straightforward rock track. Um, we have an organ off to the right and a guitar off to the left, and they sort of just vamp around rhythmically with the, the chord, and it's just really neat hearing them bounce back and forth. I love that idea. It comes off a bit too strong at times. Actually, I think there's only one time when I think it's a bit too loud, but everywhere else, I think it's just a really perfect uh, point in the production of where it has enough prominence to be heard, but sits underneath the lead elements. Um, it does provide a bit of movement, though. It's very syncopated. It has energy, forward momentum, and for a song that is at 60 beats per minute throughout most of it, which feels laid back and slow, it's definitely on the slower end of uh, tempo, the song does feel like it just goes constantly. Um, and, you know, that's kind of like time too, isn't it? Time can fly and time can stretch and sometimes they happen simultaneously. Uh, especially once you start getting into the horror side of time and you think about how long you've been on this earth and also how short it's actually felt. Simultaneously feeling the stretching and the rushing. That's probably not what they're trying to do with the music, though. I don't know, maybe it is. Uh, but it is, it does have this momentum to it that kind of betrays the the, uh, the tempo of the track. Especially when the rest of the instruments are very laid back as well. The vocals are very legato. There's not a lot of emphasis to the individual syllables. It just kind of flows together. Notes are held out for a while. It feels very relaxed. Uh, very leaned back, not really driving anywhere. There's no urgency to it, but uh, the rhythmic bouncing back and forth we have between these two instruments provides the opposite of that. And I think that's pretty cool. The drums are pretty consistent throughout. Um, the vocals, I think, are another highlight for me. Not only do we have a lot of... Well, first of all, we have the perfect sound for this. It's very echoey, very long and legato-y, lots of slurring between sound. There's not a lot of hard enunciation points, which just, again, fits this laid back feeling that most of the track has, but we also have these beautiful harmonies on it as well. Additionally, there is a soulfulness to some of the vocal lines I wasn't expecting, especially the vocalizations that happen in the backgrounds that I was quite surprised by. I don't know if Pink Floyd always utilizes them. I think this is the first time I've noticed it, but I've only heard a handful of Floyd tracks, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it was just kind of came out of the blue. It fit perfectly, though. Like, it's it. I can't imagine a track without them there. But very much like an R&B soul kind of thing going on with some of the background vocals. And I love that. You know, it, it kind of crossovers uh, genre a little bit. And that is honestly one of the best things I can see about any music, especially modern music, as a lot of stuff has already been done. And at least now, I feel like I'm at a really good time to be alive when a lot of music is just mashing up sounds that have been separated for so long. And I'm here for that. I love genre fusion. Uh, and this is a really good time for that. We hear a lot of that these days. Um, in fact, we heard a wild one this weekend with that uh, Dorian Electra. I think was the name of it. That was a crazy track. Um, but yeah, so a really nice, like interesting soul R&B kind of thing going on here. Really appreciate that. Uh, and then the harmonies, tons of harmonies. We did have a bit of a guitar solo 
in the middle of the track. And I do want to put a little bit of emphasis on that because it was very well done. I know it wasn't as virtuosic, didn't have as much display of skill as some people prefer in their uh, solos, but to me it was just very tasteful. It understood the uh, the assignment given to it from the track itself and made a melody that just worked exceptionally well with telling the story that the song is trying to tell. I did notice afterwards we had some odd time stuff somewhere between like minute three to five we sped up somewhere i don't know where it happened and then we returned back to our 60 that we had at the beginning of the track and uh i mean that's a pretty good metaphor for time too you don't really pay attention to it and all of a sudden when did we listen to this song for five minutes already? When did the tempo get so fast? What, what, what is all this that's happening? And then you realize that the song's almost over and you feel this, this lurch back to the 60 beats per second. And you just kind of realize that so much of the song happened that you didn't pick up on. Whether it was a subtle increase somewhere or a small detail that went by, you were paying attention to something else. The return to 60 felt very odd to me. Primarily because I'm pretty good at picking up tempo changes. And I honestly have no idea where it happened or how it happened. Which again feels like the experience of life. So it was interesting to return to a time or to a tempo that I didn't know we had left. It's a very weird feeling. But then we wrap the track up in a manner very similar to our A section. And I appreciate this. It creates a cyclical element to it while also wrapping up the song, starting where we or ending where we began almost as a way to nicely tidy everything up. It did end a bit abruptly, but knowing Pink Floyd, it probably moved into another track. I'm really curious. Pink Floyd is one of those bands that, to me, they do the musical painting thing in a clear and concise way. There are some bands who decide to paint with ideas that make sense once you know the concept. And these are the ones that I tend to have a lot of issue with in this context because I don't have the original intention behind it. And I'm trying to piece together what seemingly disconnected sounds are supposed to mean together. And it makes sense once I get the prompt. Uh, Frank Zappa's The Great Wazoo is an example of this that happened recently that the, my reaction to it was a bit of confusion, and then somebody said, oh, this is two bands at war with each other. No blood, but like playing music at each other. And Yep, that's, the song is a perfect, re, you know, a perfect capture of that visual. But on its own, it doesn't really tell me that. This sort of sits between that end of the spectrum and something that's just very on the surface. Like, our song is about, uh, you know, flying, and we put flutes and bird sounds in it. <laughs> like, okay, uh, that seems pretty accurate there. And granted, Pink Floyd did kick it off with clocks. I'm not going to say that they weren't completely on the nose with it. I think once you hear the clocks, time is on the mind, and everything else starts to slip into place. But they do some sneaky things in here to make it feel like a song about time. And I'm curious if the lyrics go into that because the music seems very purposeful and intentful. So on the topic of lyrics, let's dig into them. Okay. Um, you know, usually when I get done with the music and I read the lyrics, 
I kind of have an aha moment where I'm like, okay, I can connect what I said about the music with the lyrics. It's going to take me a little bit to get there. I need to explain the lyrics first, and then we can make the connections. Um, no, I, I think I already explained the lyrics with the music, and that's kind of scary. I'm not usually that accurate, but I want to chalk that up more to Pink Floyd than me. <laughs> I don't think that my musical comprehension is any better today than it was yesterday or for any other song I've checked out uh, in the last year or so. I mean, you know, micro improvements, any skill you use gets better over time, but this was scary accurate. Um, and so I'd like to just say that Pink Floyd, I mean, all the bands, anytime that I get a reading out of a song, the reading is in there. You just have to understand the language. So while I do have that skill in pulling these ideas out, the band put them in there first, and a lot of credit goes to the band because without them, I wouldn't be able to read any of this out of it. Uh, so a lot of props to Pink Floyd for just making this uh, a spectacularly cohesive track on all levels where you can listen to the music or the lyrics and get the exact same message out of it. We open up with uh, our first stanza, which comes quite a bit after the beginning of the track. Ticking away the moments that make up a dull day, fritter and waste the hours in an offhand way, kicking around on a piece of ground in your hometown, waiting for someone or something to show you the way. So basically just, uh, you know, waiting for direction in life. Wasting time waiting for that big sign to tell you it's, it's your time to shine. Says, tired of lying in the sunshine, staying home to watch the rain. You are young, and life is long, and there is time to kill today. And then one day you find ten years have got behind you. The idea of time being both fast and slow. That perception is so important to time. If it's a dull day, the seconds tick slowly. But... The very next second, you can realize a decade gone by and you still have nothing to show for it. You're still kicking around rocks on your hometown. And it says, uh, no one told you when to run. You missed the starting gun. And when you run, you run to catch up to the sun, but it's sinking, racing around to come up behind you again. The sun is the same in a relative kind of way, but you're older, shorter of breath and one day closer to death. Um, and this, I mean, it just, this is straight up midlife crisis. You hit your forties and you're like, Oh God, what do I have to show for any of this? Why didn't I start sooner? Right. If I had known then what I know now, I wouldn't have wasted my teenage days just, you know, killing time. Time is too short for me to want to just kill some of it. You know, I want to use every second, not waste it. Um, and it's that introspection and reflection that you have when you get older. That's what the whole song is about. Even the next line begins to talk about what I was talking about with the difference between the drive of the two instruments with the laid-back chill of the rest of the band, uh, as well as the tempo. It says, every year gets shorter, never seem to find the time. Uh, yeah, that's 100% it. Time is consistent. Time is equidistant. Every second is the same, but... Some seconds are longer and some are shorter and conversely some years feel shorter than others and that tends to be true the longer you're alive. At least that's my experience. I don't know where any of the last decade went. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, it, it just, you know, I, we joke about on this channel a lot that the, uh, the 2000s were just a few years ago, but that's honestly what it feels like to me most days. It's wild to think that that was almost two and a half decades now, 2000. Uh, just how did that happen? And so the music showcases this through variations of tempo, 
uh, also through different rhythmic ideas, slower and faster ones. And I really love the idea that a majority of the song at least takes place in 60 beats per minute, exactly one beat per second. I think it's a really neat choice to go that direction. Even if we start off the track with uh, subdividing it four ways, I had mentioned I counted it in 120, and that's what it feels like to me. But honestly, we could also read it as 16th notes at 60. So. All right. Those are my thoughts on Pink Floyd's time. What do you think? Put your opinions, perspectives, op opinions, again, don't know why I'm saying that again, down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link in there to Linktree. Takes you to this menu right here. You can find my music, ways to support the channel, link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. We have a special selection coming up next. Funny enough, it's another Dreadnought, which we just checked out on like Wednesday or Thursday of last week. Um, pretty interesting that two of those came in from two different people at roughly the same time. But I'm stoked about it because I enjoyed them last time. If you did, here's another chance to listen to them again. Unless you listen to all their albums on your own, which honestly they were pretty good. <laughs> I would have done the same if I didn't know that we had more coming up so soon. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.